Hi and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I make vegan and gluten-free sweet crepes. They are pliable, tender and soft with slightly crispy edges. Alright, so we'll start with the wet ingredients. Since this recipe is for sweet crepes, I'm using a banana here because it's a great substitution for oil, eggs and a sweetener in baking. If you're not a fan of bananas, you can use applesauce instead. Next up is some unsweetened almond milk, but you can use any plant-based milk you like. And a little bit of maple syrup. The maple syrup is optional, but again, since I'm making sweet crepes, I like to add it in. Now onto the dry ingredients. I have tested different gluten-free flours and flour blends, and my favorite is a combination of oat flour and brown rice flour. I always make my own oat flour because it's much cheaper than buying it in the store. All I do is process rolled oats in a food processor or a blender until I get fine oat flour. Oat flour is great for crepes because it makes them moist and chewy while the brown rice flour provides light and slightly gritty texture. As far as flavor goes, both flours are very neutral although oat flour does have a slightly nutty taste. Finally, a pinch of sea salt. Blend all the ingredients on high until you reach smooth and purple batter. Now, the consistency of the batter will vary depending on how absorbent your flours are. So if the batter is rather thick, just add a little bit more plant-based milk to thin it out. Admittedly, making crepe batter is the easy part. Flipping the crepes is a bit harder. Here I am using a cast iron crepe pan, which I love because it's naturally non-stick. Of course, if you have Teflon or any other non-stick pan, it will work as well. I like to add a little bit of coconut oil to the pan before I pour the batter in to make sure the crepes really don't stick. I usually pour the batter into the pan straight out of the blender, trying to make the crepes as round as possible. I either create a circle by pouring the batter in a circular motion until I am happy with the shape. This works the best for thin batter that naturally spreads out. It's also important to have the heat set to low or low medium so the crepe batter doesn't cook too quickly and has time to actually spread out on the pan. On my gas stove, I put the pan on the largest burner and set the heat slightly below medium. If your batter is a little bit thicker, you can just pour the batter into the pan and then use the back of a spoon to spread the batter out. I find that this method is a bit trickier, so I like to stick with the first one. Another important thing is to wait and not flip the crepes too early so they don't tear. Wait until you see bubbles forming in the center of the batter and the edges turn brown. At this point the crepe is about 65% cooked so you don't need to give each side equal time to cook before you take the crepe off the pan. I am making this crepe in real time just so you see how long it takes to make one crepe. I got about 5 medium sized crepes out of the batter. As you can see, the crepes are pliable, soft, you can fold them, you can roll them, whatever you like. I usually serve the crepes with homemade Nutella, which everybody in our family loves, and some chopped bananas. When berries are in season, I like to stuff the crepes with berries and top them with some coconut whipped cream. Thank you. 
And that's it. Delicious, tender, sweet crepes. Hope you like the recipe. Before we dive into the taste test, I want to ask you a question. Um, when I was making these crepes, I was telling Tana that I was going to make raw crepes and Tana was like, well, why would you make raw crepes? And nobody's going to make raw crepes. Um, and I was thinking about it and all of my desserts are raw because I really like raw food. Um, but ultimately, I'm sharing these recipes with you guys. So do you like it that I make raw desserts or would you prefer that I start making more cooked or baked desserts? If you could let me know in the comment section below, that would be really helpful. Uh, now onto these crepes. Um, I won't talk much about them because I'll leave that up to Tanner, but I do wanna say that I really like how light they turned out to be. So I have made crepes in the past um, using different flour blends, using old flour, wheat flour and the crepes always turned out quite dark um, and I always say this about my recipes that I like how light they are and these crepes are really light so I really like that. Yes both in shade and in texture they're light. The I would describe them as very like cake like they're not oily though so like I'm not getting any grease on my hands by holding these which is something that I would compare to like a pancake a really thin pancake uh, except there's no grease involved. It's so, like you can handle these without having to wash your hands every time. Mm, um, that's true. They're very, like, they're not dry. They're moist. They're not wet. They're very sponge-like, uh, mm -hmm. flexible. They're great for wrapping stuff up in because they have a very neutral flavor. Slight sweetness, I think, because of the maple syrup in the recipe. Like, very slight sweetness, but nothing, nothing overpowering. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.